Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the second part in this series on the Comnet constellation. Since the first one I've lost the save file I used, so I'm quickly starting by relaunching the geostationary satellites. I have one rocket that carries three satellites, and I'm then launching it into an orbit with the apogee of a geosynchronous orbit, which I took from the Kerbal Space Program wiki. The numbers are given in the description below. I then increase the perigee and use the numbers in the bottom left to verify that we get an orbital period that's exactly two-thirds that of a geosynchronous orbit. And this ensures that when we then release a satellite on each orbit and circularize, they end up being equally spaced 120 degrees apart in the geostationary orbit. Geostationary satellites are very useful because they are always in the same spot in the sky. Uh, this means you can point your antenna up one and you don't need a moving antenna to track it. However, because they have to be over the equator, you run into trouble when you get into higher latitudes. So above about 70 degrees north and south, you have trouble with reception. And above about 80 degrees latitude, you don't get any reception at all because the satellite is below the horizon. Now Russia is rather large and has a large proportion of its country at a rather high latitude, so they came up with the solution of the Molnia orbit. Uh, this is an inclined orbit, about 65 degrees, and it's also an, an eccentric orbit, which means it uh, passes perigee, uh, which is over the southern hemisphere very quickly, and then it spends a long time near apogee, which is over the northern hemisphere, and because of the shape of its orbit, it spends a relatively long time in the same spot in the sky. Also, two satellites pass each other within a few degrees when one transitions to the southern hemisphere and the other transitions to the northern hemisphere so they can hand off the signal without requiring to move antennas very much. Now that the geostationary satellites are back in orbit, I'm launching the first Molnia satellite. I launched it at exactly zero hours universal time, uh, using the clock in the top left. Uh, you can show the universal time by clicking on the clock once. Uh, this will be important later. We are aiming for an inclination of 60 degrees using the orbital information readout in the bottom left. Once we've reached the desired inclination, we can just set SAS to aim prograde and set the velocity to orbital mode by clicking the top of the nav ball once. The inclination should then stay constant and not change anymore. Then we circularize at an altitude of 150 kilometers. Um, you could use any altitude you like, uh, and then make a maneuver node. Then using the readouts in the bottom left again, you move the maneuver node to show the argument of the periapsis at 270 degrees, which means due south. If you were doing a southern hemisphere uh, Molnir constellation, you'd set it to 90 degrees. And then finally you increase the apogee until you get exactly half of the geostationary period. Uh, the exact number is given in the description as well. And now we have our first Molnir satellite in orbit, and we'll do the same thing twice again. And this is where the clock comes in. You make sure to launch the second satellite at exactly 2 o'clock, and the last one at exactly 4 o'clock, because a day on Kerbin lasts 4 hours. And this will ensure that the orbits are equally spaced, and the handoff also lines up nicely. And that's it. Good luck, and thanks for watching.